Hey everybody, it's Jen. I am back with our regular Sunday process video, but today I want to talk to you guys about texture paste. Um, texture paste is used in, you know, a lot of mixed media, but you can use it in all kinds of art. You can mix it with acrylic paints, you can mix it with inks, you can mix it with water-based dyes, you can mix it with powder, you can mix it with all kinds of things. Now I'm just going to show you guys a few things today, um, and there will be more later to share, but for right now, um, let's just get into it. So this is the texture paste, and we have opaque matte, we have transparent gloss and transparent matte the only difference between these two is one's gloss and one's matte that's it there's the same velocity um they're both like mayonnaise they have a mayonnaise consistency i don't know if you can see that they're creamy really really creamy almost like a face cream um I haven't opened this one. This is the matte. I've been playing with the gloss. But you just take this little foam. I try not to rip it. I save it. I make sure it goes back on. But these two are the same velocity and velocity and texture. So these are very, very creamy and smooth. This is opaque matte texture paste. Hi, Heather. And this one's different. It's more like a buttercream frosting consistency. I don't know if you can tell by looking. See the peaks in the lid? And this one smells like acrylic paint. But you can use this to mix with your acrylic paints to make them um, thicker or to hold your shape because it holds to, it holds its peaks and things like that really, really well. Hi, Luann. Long time no see, chicky. All right. So, the first technique that I wanted to share with you guys, I want to show you how to put it on. So, I'm using watercolor paper. You can use regular cardstock. I just like the weight of the watercolor paper. And I'm not going to soak it, but I'm going to mist it a little bit. Because, you know, when you work with watercolor paper, you want to be friendly to it and do what it likes to do. This is an all-purpose map that I'm using. Uh, Luann, you're so sweet. I haven't seen you in forever. Forever. I don't get to see anybody hardly anymore. Okay, so I want to show you how to apply it. And let's see, what stencil do I want? I've just got a couple of stencils out. These are all, these aren't close to my heart stencils. We don't have them. But you can make them on a Cricut. I buy mine all over this is like a checkerboard pattern and I'm gonna wipe some of this water off I'm gonna wipe a little bit off and I'm gonna tell you you're gonna need a palette knife now here's the thing we sell black plastic palette knives and they work very very well i'm going to move this hopefully we don't have a glare after i do there can you guys still see um these are a little stiff these are ones i've had for a long time i ordered them from an art store it was really expensive and you can tell i use them <laughs> for painting and stuff but the ones that we sell um they are let's see 695 i believe i can't remember how many you get in there let me see. If somebody goes and pulls that up for me on my website, scrappinggen.ctmh.com, and see if you can find out how many palette knives we get. Okay, so what I want to do to this, I've got to be able to work where you guys can see me. I'm going to have to scoot up. I use painter's tape. I'm just going to tear off a couple pieces here because I like for things to line up i'm gonna get this lined up where i want it i don't want to go all over the card with this so i'm just lining it up right there that's all i'm doing and then i'm going to take and tape it down 
tape this down and actually I'm going to even put it on my card a little bit so that my card doesn't move. All right, so I want the regular opaque matte. Opaque means you can't see through it. But what you can do with this is you can color it after it dries. Okay? The uh, gloss and or the transparent acts as a resist. So it's going to resist anything you put over it, both of them, the matte and the gloss. This is going to absorb. So I want something that's going to absorb a little bit of color on this because I'm going to use it for a card. So I don't know if you can tell. See how thick that is? It's real thick like buttercream. There are other brands on the market. Um, in my honest opinion, and this is my honest opinion, you guys know me, and you know I've been doing art for 30 years. Uh, Ranger Texture Paste, which is what this is, it's made by Ranger, is probably the least gritty that I've ever used because some of them tend to be really, really gritty. All right, so I'm just going to take some of this and get on with it. And you just want to smooth it over your surface. Now, if you want your texture to be bumpy, then just kind of go like this, you know? And let me zoom in so that you guys can actually see. Bear with me for just a second. I'm going to go over. Oops. Wrong way there. Oop, too far. Okay. So see how that's kind of bumpy? That's not what I want, but you can do that. You can use that effect. I want to go smooth. I want these to be smooth. I'm going to do a paint technique on this. Now my, and I'm going to tell you guys we don't sell it, but my preference is mixed media paper. I like mixed media paper. It holds up better than acrylic paper for acrylic paints. Um, that's what I use in my art journals when I paint. And they don't curl. They don't stay curled, I should say, because they do curl a little bit. I'm going to pull that back a little bit. All right, so now I want to go down to this corner. Like I said, I don't want to do the whole thing. And I'm making it smooth. I'm not, I'm putting it on like, my, see, oh, I got to go where you guys can see me. I'm so sorry. All right. Hi, Jody. How are you today, girl? Okay. Sorry about that, you guys. So I'm putting it smooth. And then I'm going at an angle, a slight angle, and I'm cleaning it up. I'm not digging into the stencil. Okay. That's important. Don't dig into your stencil because you don't want to dig it all back out of there after you just put it all in. It's kind of like icing a cake, but don't freak out. You do not have to know how to make cakes to do this. This is easy, and you're not going to get it perfectly smooth. You know, I'm going to use some more up here and maybe some more over here. And maybe go all the way over here. I need just a little bit more. I've already worked ahead of time and made some samples for you guys, and I'll explain to you the techniques I did. Because if I was to do all this on here, on video, girls, we would be here for two days. And like I said, this video is going to share a lot of things about texture paste, but not everything, because I can't fit it all into one video. There's too much. Too much. Okay, so I have baby wipes over here. This is important. You need to clean your stuff off right away texture paste dries really quick and it's like cement okay so you don't want to leave it sitting on your equipment my husband is supposed to be in here rinsing my stencils hold on guys i'm gonna have to yell for him michael he's coming he's such a good heavy all right so i'm just gonna pull this up pull that off Pull my tape off. I'm going to lay this aside and I'm going to go, oops, the other way and push that back up. Um, I'm going to get my tweezers. I always use my tweezers to pick these up, you guys. So now what I do is I take my finger 
and I run it along the edge just in case it's not smooth and I want it to be smooth. So can you guys see all that texture? And I'm okay that it's broken. I'm okay with that. Okay, I just didn't want the whole thing covered because I want to do kind of a mixed media card on this. So I'm going to set that aside. Now, you can use your heat tool to dry it, but it's going to it's going to puff up. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to dry. It does not take that long. Um, if you can wait and let it air dry, you're better off doing that. But that's how you put it on with the stencil. Okay. So now I want to get a paper towel. Get my paper towel. I got a bunch of rags over here. I'm going to dry this off. All right. So now what I want to show you guys is this. So I took this earlier and I colored it with a whole bunch of different colors of ink. Okay. So then I put with a stencil, um, just an old this stencil is the one I used, that butterfly. And I used it down here as well. I don't know, can you see the glossiness? So I colored it first. And then I put the transparent gloss over it. And it's dry. I did it about an hour ago, but it's completely dry. And look, it's flexible. It's not going to crack or anything on you. But see how glossy that is? All right, now that is a resist. So now what I'm going to do to this is take some Lagoon. And I marked them here. You guys, I love these spray pens. Love them. What I did, that's Sugar Plum. Third time's charm. There's Lagoon. I marked them because when they're in here, look, you can't hardly tell what they are. <laughs> I'm going to need you some more. Nope, you got to dry it. Oh, okay, you can just set it right there. I'm done with that one. Thank you, honey. So I went ahead and made Lagoon Mist, and I'm going to spray it right here. So I'm going to zoom in so that you guys. can see you okay, hold on just a second I want to get as close as I can without making you sick all right so you see that gloss right here you can see the image so now I'm going to change the color of my paper you see that now I've sprayed that and I'm going to blot my butterfly I'm going to wipe my butterfly my butterfly stayed the color that it was underneath. This, there was already blue over here. That's that's what you're seeing. But look at, see how it kept the color underneath when all of this around it turned more blue? Let's see what happens when I do it down here. Let's see what happens. And all I did to make this was I took the reinker for the lagoon and I put it to the first line and then I filled it. See, all these are huge. I can't believe how big they are. But I went all the way up to, I believe it's that line, this line. Oops, this line. So I went, I filled it probably a little past the first line, okay? And then with water, I filled it to that line. So now let's change this one. Let's see what happens. You guys want to see what happens? I'm going to spray it. See my paper changing color? Okay. I got it all over my hands, but you know me. I don't care. So now I'm going to blot this and get it off of that butterfly. Look. See how the butterfly kept the color that was underneath? See, because with this gloss, it's completely sealed under there. Now, since this has already dried with the uh, transparent texture paste on it, it is now safe for me to come in. I'm going to turn on the tool. It's now safe for me to come in and use my heat tool to get this to dry. And what I thought would be pretty on this for a card front, well, I'll show you. You can also fussy cut around these and use them to cut it out and use it on a card, a scrapbook layout. 
you can make a picture out of it, a magnet for your print. I always charge on the back to see all that color. All that color. Ooh, I love it. Love looking. I'm almost there. I'm not going to do it completely, but I want to do it enough where you guys can see. Get it back a little bit. This mat that I'm using is really thin, really thin mat. It's heat resistant, so it's not going to warp my mat underneath. But don't use a heat gun on your mat. Okay. All right. Enough of that noise, you guys. It's getting on my nerves. All right. So now that it's dry, you can see better how it retained the color that was underneath, and it's glossy. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. Love it. There's lots of stuff that you can do with something like that. Okay, let's move on. So the other thing that you can do, and hopefully I don't get, look at my hands. Hopefully I don't get everything everywhere. We're going to have to use the heat tool again. So what I've done with this one is I've used my stencil, and I'll show you. It's just a doily stencil. Okay, it's just got a doily cut out of it. I like to use part of it. I think it looks pretty. So again, this is water. Oops, I just disturbed it. Uh, watercolor paper. Okay, I did my texture paste, but then I put gold embossing powder on it, and I let it sit. Hi, Gisela. So now with the texture paste and the and you can you can buy embossing paste, but with this texture paste you don't need to. Let's emboss it and see what happens. Look, oh, isn't that pretty? I hope you guys can see that. Turn it around. Turn it around. I not to burn my fingers. Off. So you guys can see, I love to emboss. All right. So now we have embossed texture paste. Isn't that pretty, you guys? I love it. And actually, this is going to be my card, and it's going to go this way. And then I made, I'm going to have to make a new one, though, because I couldn't find my anti-static pouch. But I embossed this with the black, and it got everywhere. So, but I'm going to, this is going to be a card front. But I just wanted to show you guys this, another way. And it feels, um, can you see the bumps? Can you see the bumps in there? It feels like metal. It is so cool, you guys. It really is. I love to emboss. So there we have, there's your transparent gloss with resist. Okay, and I showed you how to put color over it and change the color. And then the background color shines through. Here's your heat embossed opaque texture paste. Yes, I have a blue thumb. So now what I want to show you guys is this. So I did this earlier. I used a brick stencil. And if you have a Cricut, you can cut a stencil out of cardstock and it'll work with texture paste. So I went ahead and used texture paste on that. So what I want to show you guys, I'm going to take, first I'm going to take mink. I've got to turn the light on so I can, well, maybe I can do it with the light off. Okay, let me come out just a little bit. That's too much. Oops. Come back. If I go up that way, I can pull it towards me a little. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to take the mink because I want this to look like a brick and kind of cement 
wall. And what I want to do with the mink is color behind the bricks. I'm going to go over it with another color to actually color the bricks and make it look like brick. So right now I'm just spraying, see that? See how it picks up that color? And it'll hold on to it. I'm trying to spray the background. Now I could have sprayed the background first and then did my texture paste. But see in here, I'm gonna get out of the light. See in the grooves how it looks like cement. Okay. So now again, and you can also let it run. See how it runs? You can also let it run. But I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool. Can you guys see that? How it colored the background. And now it looks like my mortar between my bricks. Isn't that cool? I'm telling you, texture paste is so much fun. And I have a bunch of canvases that I've used it on to you. But I couldn't get them down. They're packed. I tried. I'm going to drive from the back to you. I always drive from the back. It's not going to lift off of your paper. And yes, it's going to curl because I'm adding heat to it. But it's not going to flake off. It's not going to break off. You don't burn your paper when you use a heat gun. And remember, your heat guns get hot. Do not use them on your furniture. Don't use them any, on anything that's not heat resistant. Almost done here, you guys. All right. Well, oh, sorry about that. I hate having to use the heat gun, but you really need to sometimes when you're working with this stuff, especially since I'm filming. If I wasn't filming, I could have, you know, left it sit. So, see how that changed? And now it looks like I have a white brick wall. But I don't want a white brick wall. So I put together, now let me zoom out because I want to share with you guys some things. Let me see which way I'm going. Oops, wrong way. All right. All right, let me push this up. All right, there we go. I'm going to come back just a little. Whoops. Sorry, you guys. I'm still getting used to this camera. I love it, though. So I put together a container. This is. These are all things, just some of the things, that you can use with texture paste. Okay? So, like, I even used, this is coffee. Yeah, I melted it because <laughs> the coffee was a little too hot when I put it in there. But I use coffee and tea a lot with texture paste to color stuff. I could spray a little bit on here and show you. It just kind of ages it. And I'm just going to do the edge. See that? And then let it run down. That's coffee. Oh, and it smells good. I'm going to dry this a little bit. Because I do need it to be dry. That's not a shadow. That's where the coffee was sprayed. And I don't care what the back of it looks like because it's going to be for a card. You're not going to see it. Hi, Renee. You're just in time for coffee. That's what I have in here. <laughs> I made a coffee spray. Okay. So do you see how the coffee aged it even more? Isn't that cool? Mm-mm-mm. 
I love, I wish you guys could feel this. So I told them what I did was I put the texture paste on here, let it dry. This is watercolor, cold press watercolor paper. That's important. Don't use hot press. Use cold press. Um, it's all in the way it's made. Hot press does not accept all these different mediums the way cold press does. So you have to use cold press. Ours works really well. I like it. I had never used it before, but it's not doing too shabby, you guys. Okay. So these are some watercolors that I had, just old watercolors that came in an art kit. Because I don't have ours yet. Hopefully I will soon. Hopefully soon. I don't know what this came off of. Okay. You can use... These are the reinkers that I use to fill my mist pens. These. And remember, I wrote the name on it. These come in a set of three, and they're only um, four ninety five. You guys, I love them. Or no, four fifty. They're four fifty, and you get three of them, and they're huge. I couldn't believe how big they were. You see them. Compared to my hand, you know, you wouldn't have to put near as much in here as I did. I plan on using these colors for other stuff, but, you know, I'm ordering more. I didn't realize. I ordered them because, you know, I want to try stuff out before I tell you guys to buy it. Well, some things I am very, very pleasantly surprised. Okay, I've got some alcohol inks here. Um, alcohol ink is way different than the water-based dye inks. These are made with alcohol, and these you can use on metal. You can use on plastic, acrylic. You can use on everything that's permanent. It does not, these, these are not waterproof. Don't get it on your hands. You'll be wearing that color for a long time. And these are all close to my heart re-inkers. And what else? Okay, this is, um, these are Shinhan markers that we sell. This is red. And actually, it is carmine is the color. Um, you can even color this with markers. I'm not going to. You can use. I'm going to get my. I got to find my. I thought I had it out. Here it is. We have the um, water brushes. And I am going to. Get it wet, just lightly. Whenever you work with watercolor, you want to get make sure it's wet. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to start mixing some paint. Okay, because I want to color some of these. I'm going to use a little yellow and a little white to kind of mute it down, because I don't want it to be too bright. But I'm just going to come in here and color brick put the cap back on that's what I get for putting stuff up right and take some off because I don't I don't really want it to be an orangey I'm gonna get some green in here I want it to look like old mildew bricks you know, and the mink really helps to do that. I don't think I want to put too much color on here. I think I might add some down here. I'm going to add a little color. Okay. And I'm going to take my water. I'm going to spritz it. Let it kind of run down into the cracks. And see how it looks like an old moldy. Oh, I just think that's going to be neat. It's going to be like a romantic vintage kind of card. And then I'm going to spray a little water up here and get some more paint and just kind of let it do its thing. You know, watercolor paint will go wherever it wants to. You can try and stop it. It's not going to happen. Um, I'm trying to make like a brown. And if you mix enough colors together, you'll get brown. <laughs> but I just want to put some of that in here. I'm trying to keep this side a little cleaner. I'm 
Okay. Let's free that a little bit. Let it kind of run down and go where it wants to go. Wipe off some of my bricks. See? Isn't that cool? These bricks down here, I want them to have some green on them. I'm going to get me a little more green. I always mix stuff up over here, you guys. I don't hardly ever do it out of my palette. And I'm just going to go and hit some of these. Kind of like how a plant leaves behind a residue after it's grown up a brick wall. You know, look at, I love how dirty that corner is. Maybe that's where, you know, the plant came out of and we didn't get a lot of sun there and stuff, you know. Let your, let your work tell a story. Let people have, you know, use their imagination. Give them something to really, to really see and look at, you know. You don't have to be an artist to do this stuff, you guys. This is easy, easy stuff. This is high school, high school art, middle school art, you know. I don't think grade school, they won't let them play with texture paste, but they let them play with clay, you know. I'm just going to add a little bit of water and let that shake that down. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that for what I want to do. To clean your water brush, you just squirt and wipe. Look, till it comes clean. Isn't that awesome? These are so nice. So nice. Oops, get my cap on there. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. This is the small. They come in a small, medium, and a large, and it's six fifty a piece for these. And it, this is huge. This is a really big one. See how big that is? It's gonna hold a lot of water. I've used this for since I got it. I think what a couple weeks ago I got it, you guys. And I'm just now down to that much water. And the project that I did today took a lot of water. So hi, Holly. Okay, so moving on. Let's move on. Got things to do, guys. You guys got things to do. We got art to create. Isn't that right? I'm going to put this somewhere where I'm not going to stick my arm in it. And wipe this up. And again, I just use baby wipes to clean up my mat, my work surface. Just use baby wipes. Okay. So I showed you guys how to emboss. I showed you the... Um, transparent. I showed you how to apply it by using this card as an example. This is another card I'm going to color, but I'm going to use um, metallic paint on this one, I believe. Oh, Renee, I know. I love the water brush pens. You do like the brick look? You can easily make a stencil on your Cricut for a brick. You know, easily. I use, I'll show you which one I use because we don't sell stencils. But this one is, what is this one? The Crafter's Workshop. That's the one I used. I think I got it. This is a little bit of a bigger brick than I wanted, but it actually goes that way. Um, I can't remember where I got this. I believe I got it. I ordered it. I think I ordered it. I don't remember. But, yeah, I really like how that turned out. And it's not quite dry, but look at that patina from using that green. Oh, I love it. Okay, let's move on. So the last thing that I want to show you guys with texture paste, and it's something that I really love, love. So we're going to work with the transparent gloss and the regular. And remember, I told you, the um, transparent gloss and the transparent matte, okay, just one's glossy and one's not. But they both work the, the same way. These act as a resist. You can color them um, and put them over another, you know, surface that's been colored. And then when it dries, it'll be a different color. But it also seals the color that you put it on top of. So, like, I was telling you guys, this one that I did, I colored it first, put the texture paste on. Then I came back with Lagoon and sprayed it. And the yellow and the orange and stuff that you're seeing, that's from underneath. 
so it seals whatever color you put it over and you're not going to be able to serve it and see it's flexible it doesn't crack it doesn't flake i love it and it feels so cool you guys it feels so cool um let's see what was i going to do oh i know what this goes to this goes to that so now let's color it and then we'll texture or we'll stencil something so i'm going to grab another piece of you know what let's use cardstock i've used watercolor paper let's just use cardstock this is white daisy our white daisy is a little thicker than the regular colored cardstock that we sell and it's because a lot of people you know use it to make card bases and this is what all of our card bases are made out of as well so what i want for this one let's see what do i got here what do i got i've got more stencils over here let's see I don't know if I have any small enough, so I don't want to use a real big one. Oh, well, this might be cute. This might be cute. And make like a word graffiti. You know, it says imagine, dream, peace, believe, wish, hope. Kind of make it go off a little bit. Maybe let's scoot it that way. Let's scoot it this way. That might make a cute card. Oh, I think I will do that. I think I will do that. The other one I was going to grab. And I've got chicken wire stencil. and I like texture. You guys like background. I have this one. And it's just different medallions. No, mandalas. Oh, I'm going to learn how to talk one of these days, you guys. This one I got at Joanne's. But you can find stencils anywhere. But I thought this would be pretty on a card. And then there's a smaller one. You could do this in one corner and something like that in another you know, I love texture paste. Okay, so we're going to do this one. But what I want to do is um, I want to use colored texture paste. So in order to do that, we are going to, you know what? I'm going to use the transparent mat for this. I am going to definitely use the transparent mat. Okay, let me pick a color for this. And I am going to spray. I've got sugar plum. Oh, I wonder what it would look like. Let's do sugar plum. Oh, look, it's pretty. And the cardstock's going to curl when it gets wet. You guys know that. It's paper. Oh, I love these sprays, you guys. Look how curly it got. Isn't that funny? But look at look how deep that color is. From sugar plum. I never get sugar plum to look that like that. Okay, so there's that. But I also want to add. I've got these from that. Oh, it's the Love Blossoms kit. And it's got thistle and pixie in there. Since we're doing. Let's see, thistle is kind of a purple and pixie. I'm not sure. I think Pixie's like a fuchsia, maybe. I'm just going to put a little bit down here. I'm just going to put a little bit down there. And I'm going to go back and get my water brush. Because I just want to see what color it is. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then this is what I'm going to do. This is just something that I do, you guys. You can either do it or not. But I'm just going to wipe this on here. Okay, and that's the pixie. I'm going to take some water. I'm going to get it wet and see the color pool. And I'm just going to drag that through it. Drag it through it. Now see how I got some more color on there? That's just another way you can do it, you guys. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to hurt your hands. Get dirty. Get down and dirty. Because that's the fun part about creating stuff, right? Part of the fun. You know what? I do wonder what it's going to look like with thistle. Let's try some with thistle. Maybe soak up that that's turning blue. Can you see that? That's from my hands from the lagoon. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. I'm just going to a little swipe like that. I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to let it. Just pick it up the way I put it down there. 
Isn't that pretty? Make like a little graffiti card. Oh, I just think that's pretty. I love all that color. Ooh, love it. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this up. And you guessed it. I'm gonna dry it. I've got to dry it. Otherwise, you can't move on to the next part. It doesn't take very long, thank goodness. And I'm not using my versa mat under here. Hi, Karen. No, Renee, I did not. Let me turn this off. Renee, I did not seal with the paper. Um, this is our cold press watercolor paper that I've cut down to make, a, you know, an A2 card. This is our white daisy card stock. I don't do anything to it, okay? Um, now, on a side note, I also like to use um, Strathmore's mixed media. No, Canson. Canson mixed media paper. That's what my art journals are. It doesn't curl. Um, but that's a little too heavy to use for a card. But I wanted to show you guys how you could use cardstock. And do, now I could have done this on cardstock easily. And you, like I said, you don't have to do anything to your paper to prep it. I'm going to dry this real quick. Real quick. I love our ink, you guys. Look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? I just, I have all kinds of ink, all kinds of brands. And I'm going to tell you, since I've gotten all my close to my heart ink, since I've gotten all my close to my heart inks, I have not used my other brands. I love our ink. Absolutely, hands down. And you don't want to burn your paper. You definitely don't want to do that. Don't hold it in one spot too long. See how it starts to flatten back out. And I'm going to zoom in while I'm doing this. I'm going to zoom in. Because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm going to do next. Oh, dry enough for me, you guys. Sorry about that. I'm just going to let this cool so it'll lay flatter. All right, so I've got this really pretty background and the blue, or the blue lagoon. <laughs> the lagoon, which it is kind of a blue-green, um, came off of my hands because it's a water-based dye. And I'm okay with that. I am perfectly okay with that. So I am going to stencil with texture paste over this. And I want this to be the color that comes through my texture paste because then I'm going to color the card a completely different color. So I want to use the matte. Well, there's two ways I can do this. Shoot, you guys. I can either, you know what? I'm going to use the regular texture paste here. Oh. I got too many of them sitting here. We do sell the opaque mat, which is, I okay, I'll be honest with you. I do, do use these. I have used these for a long time. <clears throat> well, not these two little bottles, but I don't use the transparent texture paste as often as I use the regular opaque mat. This is the one I use all the time. I use it in mixed media. I use it in acryl acrylic painting. I use it in this kind of stuff this is just my favorite you can color it it holds color gee silly you're so funny i love that movie too and the second one was not any good brooke shields and christopher atkins did it the best okay but i wasn't allowed to watch it until i was 15 my mom wouldn't let me watch it <laughs> thought that was funny so i think what i am going to do is use See, I have to decide, do I want to cause a resist or do I want to absorb color? 
because this is going to absorb whatever I do over it. This is going to resist whatever I do over it. Um, and I don't necessarily want it. Well, you know, it's for kid. All right. All right. That's it. This is what we're doing. Okay. So I am going to see how it, can you guys see how glossy it is? Can you see that? Oh, it's just so creamy. It's like mayonnaise. You know, it's like face cream. It does have a little bit of an odor to it. Again, you're using things that are acrylic based, but it doesn't make you sick and it's not overpowering. But if you are sensitive, then do the sniff test before you use it, okay? I've gotten this stuff on my hands and um, <laughs> I've got it in my mouth. Don't ask me, but I just put a little bit out here. I'm going to put my lid, put your lid on right away, you guys, because this stuff dries really quick and you don't want it to dry out on you. So now I want to color that and I think I'm going to use acrylic paint. We're going to go with, we're going to make two colors here. Okay, I should have put them, let me grab a smaller knife, pick that up and move it over here. I'm going to move this off over here and don't worry, I'm going to scoot it over so you can see. I just need to get them far apart because I'm going to use, this is alcohol ink and I'm going to put a few drops in here. Well, I guess one big drop, one big drop. Um, alcohol ink is, like I said, permanent. You don't want to get it on your hands. It's great for metals, plastics. I wish we sold it. I hope we start selling it. It's not in the new catalog, though. I can tell you that much. So see how I colored that? And if I want a deeper color, I just add a couple more drops. Because I, I do want it to be deep. It's only going to hold so much color, though, you guys. It's like icing or anything else. It's only going to hold so much color. That's just the way everything is. So see that? Looks like, um, where's my camera? It looks like raspberry sauce. Oh, it looks good. Now I want to go to the Dairy Queen. <laughs> Give me a strawberry sundae, you guys. All right, so there's that one. So then over here. I think, do I want to add any blue in there? I don't think I do. But, hmm. Where's my... You can also take your watercolor, dry, and flake it. Like use, you know, your palette knife and scrape color into that and color it that way that's another way but i think oh here it is i do have purple okay so i'm going to use the alcohol you can okay like here's the thistle i'll show you with this because i'm just going to do something else with it anyway okay see i put a good amount on my mat look you can color it with our inks oh i'm just going to use this color i think I'm not going to use the alcohol. But see, it mixes with our inks really well. It's because our inks are water-based. And this is a water-based product. But it dries permanent. This texture paste does. If you need a little bit more, just right next to it. Squish out some more. I love these. I wish we still sold them. For you guys. You guys would love them. If any of you have any um give them a shout out we show them some love right here on the screen you guys because they are awesome these little inkers okay so i promise my texture paste is still here i'm just scooping it up Ooh, that's a pretty color okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna clean this part up a little bit I'm going to zoom back out so you guys can see the process of what I'm doing. Hope you guys aren't bored. 
I swear, every time I do a live and we're all on here together, we find out we all have more and more in common. I love it. Can you guys see? Okay, let me see what I got to do here to make it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Get some stuff out of my way. All right. Let me... Oops, the other way. Here we go. I hear my husband in the candy jar. He do. He says he do. All right. I use painter's tape. And I use the uh, the good kind that's not going to peel your, tear your paper apart. <laughs> it doesn't peel your paint off the wall, whatever kind that is. So I'm going to tape down here where I've got part of my card. And then I'm going to go up here. Because... I don't want, well, there we go. There we go. And I'm going to tape up here and just get it stuck so that it's, all right. So I think now is where you can either be very um, meticulous or just do your thing and don't care at all. Now, I am going to do both. I'm going to start putting this, and you just put it on like icing, like I said, but you do not know how to, have to know how to make a cake, okay? Do not need to know how to make a cake. All right, that's that color. And then I thought I would put this where the hearts are, and that one, and there's a little one there. And then just kind of go through. Yep, I'm just going to use both of them. Make sure I'm getting it on there good. You want to get it on kind of thick so that you can see it. I've got more of this one, so I'm just going to swipe right down the center. Okay. Now, again... You can dry this with a heat gun after you take your stencil off of it, of course, but it will bubble your, oh, look, is that cute? Isn't that cute? My granddaughter would love, love, love that. Now, when this dries, because I used the gloss, that's going to be shiny, and it's going to look like I embossed it. Isn't that cool? I'm going to have to make some more stencils. So what do you guys think? Oh, I do too, Renee. I don't want to use them because I'm afraid of using them all up. And it's okay if I got like a couple of, like right here. I can wipe it off or leave it. But All right, so there's that one. So this is transparent gloss that we colored. Okay, we colored it and put it on top of cardstock that I also colored. And I showed you different ways to do that. So there's that one. This is regular texture paste on cold press watercolor paper. And our watercolor paper is a 9 by 12 pad. It's big. It's not the 8.5 by 11. And you get 15 sheets. And I believe it's. Oh, 13, 1395 is what it is. I had to go look at the website. I couldn't remember. Um, but this is cold press. So this, and it's curled because it's still kind of wet a little bit. But it's all, look, I could paint it. Now, I didn't use the heat gun on this one, did I? I don't think so. No, I set it aside to dry. But it's already ready for me to work with it. Okay. So then, we did a brick background with this one the opaque matte texture paste and again i said like i said you could buy this by itself you don't have to buy the trio the uh let me just run down real quick so the texture paste trio you get all three of these and there's one ounce in each one and that doesn't sound like a lot but i'm gonna tell you it lasts 
it goes a long way. <laughs> a little goes a long way. Um, these three together are $14.95, okay? Then you can go and just get a 3.95 ounce. I believe that's what it is. Let me look. I've got notes over here, you guys, because I do not want to tell anybody anything wrong. Get 3.9 ounces for the bigger one. And it is $9.95. And if you buy that one, it is going to last a very long time. Very long. Unless you're out there doing mixed media every day. But that's what I used on this one. And then we did the mists with, you know, the spray pen mist. I love these things. I love them. Okay. So that's that one. This one. Hey, Michael. My husband's going to clean my stencil. Because like I said, you don't want this stuff to dry on your stencils. I mean, you can get it off. <laughs> the, uh, the regular texture paste, you can like run it under really hot water and really work with it and get it off. This stuff does not want to come off once it dries. Hold on, babe. Here's these. And I gotta turn the light on, you guys, because I can't see to clean up my mess. I gotta get this off of my mat. So I'm just gonna grab some baby wipes. And I'm just gonna wipe this up. See, it's already starting to dry. Already starting. Um, I've used coffee on the one with the bricks and I've used acrylic paint I've used I showed you how to use alcohol inks I showed you how to use our, our inks work amazing with this and I imagine that's why we sell it I bet you they tried it out and saw how great it did work together um, I plan on doing a lot more mixed media projects with our ink and this texture paste you guys like I said earlier, I was going to get some of my canvases down and show you what other things that I do with texture paste, but I can't reach them. They're way up high on the shelf. Way, way up high. All right, let me zoom back out here. Zoom back out. Okay. And. All right. There's one more thing that I wanted to show you. So. My grandson Liam is going to be six, and his birthday party is April 20th. Mm -mm. No, it's the day before Easter. Is Easter the 21st, you guys? I'm telling you, I need to get a dry piece of towel. Ugh, I dry this up because it's wet. All right, so. Oh, and I forgot to show you a recap of this one. Let me turn my light off. This is the one where we took. The regular texture paste, I put it on, let it, um, or I put it on, sprinkled it with embossing powder, the gold ranger embossing powder that we sell, and those are five ninety five, dollars um, and I let it sit until it was dry, which was, again, 15, 20 minutes, and then I heat embossed it with my heat tool. Can you see that? Let me get my... Fix my focus here. And maybe it will let you. Oh, there we go. Isn't that gorgeous? Ooh, I love it. That's probably my favorite technique, you guys. You want to see it, honey? That's the embossed texture paste. You can touch it. You guys should see its face. He, he really is my biggest supporter. He really is. Thank you very much. He is your biggest fan. Oh, and my biggest fan, you hear that, guys? Okay, so I've got this little, um, my, my grandson's going to have a birthday. And I thought, this would be cute. So we've got this set that's leaving, okay? It's leaving, but it is the Stamp and Thin Cut Sweet Birthday Set. And it's got the little cupcake. Look, you can put a little face <coughs> on the cupcake. It's got sprinkles. It says, sweet as a cupcake, have a sweet birthday. It's got a candle, and it's got a little hat. I just thought this was so cute. Hopefully, my focus stays. Um, I thought it would be cute to put the hat on the cupcake and the candle, but put the hat kind of cockeyed. But what I was going to do with this 
I'm going to go back and color all this in, but I want to show you what I'm going to do to the top. And my upline showed this in one of her videos, and it's really uh, cute. So I'm going to take regular, regular texture paste. My husband did not bring my palette knives back, but I've got another one here. And I'm just, I don't need very much. And I am going to fussy cut the bottom. I'm not going to fussy cut around the top because I don't care if I get it on the top. So, and because it's for a boy, and I probably don't need that much, but I'm just going to leave it. Make sure you get your lid on right away and get it on well. And I'm going to take, this is just your cheap folk art craft paint. This is the metallic. What kid would not want shiny icing on their cake, right? Get me some, oh, whoops, that's a little bit much, but I'm filming. You know how it goes. So I'm going to color this with the paint. And I'm actually going to scoop it off over here so that I don't pick up all that paint. All right. This is his blue icing. And I am going to... I'm going to ice a cupcake, you guys. Now I want a cupcake. I want ice cream and I want a cupcake. Oh, maybe I'm having a sweet tooth day. And neither one of them I'm supposed to have because I'm diabetic. But everything in moderation, right? But I have learned how to make a lot of things that are okay for me to eat. And again, I didn't do anything to prepare this. I am just spreading it on. I like it to be bumpy. You know, icing isn't perfectly smooth unless you use a tip. And this was not put on with a tip. But I don't want to lose the shape of my card, so I'm going to be careful. Oh, this is so cute. I wish you guys could see it in person. I'm going to hold it up and see if you guys can see all of the texture in it. It does look like icing. That kid's going to think this is real icing. So what I did, this is the thin cut and stamp set. So what I did was I cut two of these out because I am going to back it with on another piece of cardstock just to make it sturdier. Okay. So I'm going to do some texture here. Oh, that is so cute. And I want to bring a little swoop. Well, it's not going to swoop. Wipe it out a little bit. There we go. So there's the icing on the cupcake. Isn't that cute? And like I said, I'm going to fussy cut this right up to the paper. And I'm going to color this in with watercolor pencil or marker or paint, whatever. Because you can paint on cardstock too, you guys. You just want to water your paint down a little bit. Not a whole lot. Oh, that is so sweet. So I'm just going to let that dry. Yeah, I've got quite a bit left over. But now it's going to go in the garbage because I can't put it back. But like I said, a little goes a long way. Hey, Michael. Get my man in here to dry or wash my. Michael! Oh. Eh. Wipe this off. Wipe this off. Okay. All right. One more thing and then we're done, you guys. One more thing, and then we're done. So, I don't know. Can you see that? I made these, and I colored them by, I stamped the color on, because it has like a watercolor image. And then I went in with watercolor smushed my paint on my mat my water or my ink and then painted over it and used clear 
We got one more. Where'd he go? He used clear on it. And then there's the little one. Aren't those cute? There we go. There we go. But I thought I might. What do you think? Look pretty. And then I thought down here I would do um, some flowers. And this would be a card. Okay. And then this one, like I said, on these, you can either cut this out, you can fussy cut this, or leave it the way it is. And I thought, what if I did one on there? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It just picks up all that color. And you could, you know, put a sentiment right here. And, yep. I just think that's pretty. And then this one, uh, I made it to go that way. Look. Look how pretty that goes with that gold. And I could have used gold shimmer on that. I'm going to try this one to see how it looks. Oops. Nope. Not crazy about it. Not crazy about those colors. But I do want to use this one, I think, on here. And... You know, look at, oh, wouldn't that be pretty? Who doesn't love butterflies, right? They're a sign of freedom. And we all should have a free spirit. Yep. All right. So there's icing. There is the colored gloss, transparent gloss, on top of cardstock that I already colored. This is opaque texture paste matte. And then I put it on. Threw a stencil, sprinkled my embossing powder all over it, let it dry, and then I used my heat tool. This is, scoot that up. This is transparent gloss. And I colored this first by taking ink and different colors and rubbing it all over. Put my gloss on, then I sprayed it with my mist to change the color of the paper, and the background color popped through. And this is glossing. And this is the opaque texture paste. And look at how nice that takes the color. The texture paste takes the color. Isn't that pretty? Mm, I love it. And this is where I showed you how to put it on. Okay. I thank you guys for being here. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Like I said, I love texture paste. You've got to try it out. If you've never tried it, it will open up a whole new world yes karen hi angie karen i know you love butterflies girlfriend i do too i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your afternoon if you guys have any questions just leave them in the comments below or send me a message thank you again for being here and all your support um i love to share things with you guys and hopefully i'm teaching you guys stuff that you didn't know before um but if it gets monotonous let me know i'm going to be doing some new things next week and I will keep you informed. So, and you guys, you guys, hold on. Let me show you. I got to show you. These kids need a home. There's nine of these kids in here, you guys. The next person that places an order on my website, I am sending these children to live with you. Oh, yeah. And maybe a few extra pieces, too. I'll talk to whoever that is about it, see if they want. There's a schoolhouse and there's a little apple and stuff. But anyway, have a wonderful Sunday. And I will be talking to some of you later on. Bye. Mwah.